ask, what is your, what's your rank? I am the first sergeant of the Company M, the battery, but I'm also the ordnance sergeant. So I got two different uniform coats that I can wear. Okay. And so for simplicity in, in my vehicle, I just brought my first sergeant's coat. All right. So it, the other ones are at home. And what are you going to demonstrate here for us? I'm going to demonstrate the 1861 cartridge. When the war started in 1861, they had to come up with a faster way and an easier way to make a cartridge for the, for the mini ball. Now the mini ball was invented by a Frenchman by the name of Claude Minet in the eight, early 1850s. And what his invention was, and all he did was make improvements on the bullet at the time, yep. and his name kind of stuck. But at his invention, it was more conical in shape, it had grease rings, and it had a hollow base. Now the gases, from the uh, ignition of the gunpowder would expand the skirt into the rifling. Now originally rifling had been invented to try to get more shots, you know, before you'd have to stop and clean your weapon. Well what they discovered is that the, rif the skirt here would take to the rifling and then when it comes out of the barrel it's spiraling like throwing a football. Yeah. And then they found out that the, you increase the accuracy of the weapon and you increase the range uh, a round ball, musket ball, of the American Revolution only went about 75 to 100 yards. But by the time of the Civil War in the mini ball, the killing range is now 300 yards to almost 900 yards. Uh, they said the range of 900 yards would be a man on horseback that a soldier should be able to hit somewhere in that square at 900 yards. Now, that's not saying that all riflemen were experts because it took 16 pounds of lead during the war to kill each man that was killed because there was a lot of lead flying over their heads. And so that's, now this is a workstation of the arsenal. And so the arsenal was made up of women and kids, 14 and above, and it was assembly type work. And so each, each group had a specific job. Now this first station, and I've condensed it down to a one-man operation, but it, this station here would be with the two box here. And what they would do with this, they would fill it up, and this thing will hold almost 500 tubes. Now what is a tube? Well, this is a tube. The cartridge, before it becomes a cartridge, starts out with a trapezoid. Yeah. And then you make it, it take two, two, or two, two trapezoids and two tubes to make a cartridge. The bullet will be in one. Now this one here, these are earmarked for blanks. But what they would have done, they would have sat there and filled up the tube box with tubes. Yeah. They said, according to the Ordnance Manual of 1862, a worker should be able to manufacture in a 10-hour day 2,000 tubes. And so once it's filled, they would turn it right side up, like I've got this one here. Yep. And then it'd go down to the next workstation, and there'd be a guy, and he would take, all he would do is just charge each cartridge with a powder charge. Okay. Then it goes down to the next workstation where they're making the necessary folds. They're closing them off, like I've got this one here. Yep. And then 10 would be bundled with a tube of caps, and then 100, 100 bundles would go into the ammunition box and then ship to the field. And then an ordnance sergeant like myself would take possession of it, and then it would be my responsibility to issue to the troops. Wow. So this is what I'm going to make, is an 1861 cartridge okay. from scratch. Now the powder I use is a railroad ballast that a lot of railroaders use for a road bed, so it's not explosive, and that way I can make them and sell them to the spectators as a, a souvenir, because the mini ball and the cartridge is what did all the damage. Right. So the first tube here is going to hold the greasy bullet. Now the bullet was lubricated 
with a combination of tallow, beeswax, and boiled linseed oil. So you didn't want to contaminate the powder charge. Oh, can you give me those scissors, sir? Right here. Oh, thank you. So I, I trumped it. I'm going to tie it off here, wrap it around, and tie it in a regular granny knot. This was not done in the field. This was always this was done in a fixed location, in, in a building. Now, actually, they would have done it the opposite way, but it, since I'm left-handed, I must have my my <laughs> smart brain on the right side, because I'm sure they probably would have found ways. The way they some they say they done it is that you know they made a tube, and then they sat this down on there. And then made the second one. Okay. But I've kind of changed it around, and I put the bullet in the first tube like so. All right. And then run it down. Okay. And then I make the second tube. It, it's the same effect. Yeah. Well, stay off of there. Doesn't want to cooperate. And the second tube would hold a powder charge. So you make, you're making two tubes that are exactly the same. Right, two tubes are going, are going to be the same. They are tying it off. Well, I'm, I'm crumping it. Okay. I'm choking it off. Yeah. Now see, the rival for the Springfield was a 58, yeah. 58 caliber. Once the bullet is sized, it comes out when it's cast at 580, and then it's either you know swags or nose cast or which, whichever way the bullet's made. And then once you run it through a sizing die, it makes it 575. Okay. So just just a five you know five hundredths of a of an inch smaller. So it will slide down the barrel, but you don't need no wadding to go with it because it's the skirt when it when the explosion takes place in the breech, that that skirt is going to take to the rifling, and no gases can leak around it, yeah. and so it propels it forward out the barrel. Excellent. Now I'm going to slide this on here. So you're sliding the one that's got the bullet over, right. over the. Um, that's going to hold the powder charge and keep the, the cartridge from getting damaged from the grease. I see. And then 65 grains of powder would go in each one. Now what's that tool that you have there? This is just a, uh, an implement for, it's got different measurements on there. It's originally for shotguns and I, it's just the right size to do a 65 grain and that way I don't have to bring out a plastic uh, thing to do my my shot loads okay. you know it looks more period one scoop like I said they would have went down the line yet they would have filled each one of those and then sent it on down yeah but I kind of I do these one at a time to do my demonstrations what do you rub it? Oh, you're just shaking the powder. I'm just out. shaking, loving the powder out. Now, each cartridge is going to have five creases in the cartridge. And that was designed to keep the powder charge in the cartridge and not leaked out in the cartridge box. Yeah. I've creased it. I tap it to level the powder charge. Yeah. Because i got to make two little wings here. See, I'll make two little wings, and then I fold them into the middle, flatten it out. Flatten that side out, down, flatten it out again. Then it's going to go back over the top, back down, and I make the final crease right here. And here you have an 1861 paper cartridge. Wow. Made just like the original. And you can compare 
This is, a, is at least 140, 45 years old. That one's brand new. The only difference, this one has been exposed to the air for 140 years. That's what has turned them uh, brown. Originally, those cartridges would have been the same color as that, an off-white.